Today we're going to be learning about the abominable snowman. The actual abominable snowman. The Yeti. The purported abominable snowman. We're going to be reading about the Yeti. This is one of the most exciting topics anyone can embark upon. Imagine one of these hominids actually exists somewhere in the Himalayas. How exciting the world would feel. It may not be there, but there's more likelihood of it existing than the Sasquatch in North America at least. The Yeti is an ape-like creature purported to inhabit the Himalayan mountain range in Asia. In Western popular culture, the creature is commonly referred to as the Abominable Snowman. Many dubious articles have been offered in an attempt to prove the existence of the Yeti, including anecdotal visual sightings, disputed video recordings, photographs, and plaster casts of large footprints. Some of these are speculated or known to be hoaxes. Folklorists trace the origin of the Yeti to a combination of factors, including Sherpa folklore and misidentified fauna such as bear or yak. The Yeti is commonly compared to Bigfoot of North America, as the two subjects often have similar physical descriptions. The Yeti is often described as being a large bipedal ape-like creature that is covered with brown, grey or white hair, and it is sometimes depicted as having large, sharp teeth, like a wampa. The word Yeti is derived from Tibetan... Uh, yeah, that's there's a lot of... Words I'm not going to be able to pronounce there. The etymology of this is seems fascinating, but difficult to actually pronounce. Tibetan law describes the three main varieties of yetis. The Nyalmo, which has black fur and is the largest and fiercest, standing around 15 feet tall. The Chuti, which stands around 8 feet tall and lives 8,000 to 10,000 feet above sea level. And the Rang Shim Bombo, which has reddish brown fur and is only 3 to 5 feet tall. That reminds me of descriptions of the, uh, what are they called, the Almas? Anyway. Other terms used by Himalayan peoples do not translate exactly the same, but refer to legendary indigenous wildlife. There's a bunch of terms there. I'm not going to try and pronounce all of those. In Russian folklore, the Chuchuna is an entity said to dwell in Siberia. Dwell in Siberia. It has been described as six to seven feet tall and covered with dark hair. According to the native accounts from the nomadic Yakut and Tungus tribes, it is a well-built Neanderthal-like man wearing pelts and bearing a white patch of fur on its forearms. It is said to occasionally consume human flesh, unlike their close cousins the Almastus. Some witnesses reported seeing a tail on the creature's corpse. It is described as being roughly six to seven feet tall. There are additional tales of large reclusive bipedal creatures worldwide, notably including, of course, both Bigfoot and the Abominable Snowman. The name Abominable Snowman was coined in 1921, the year Lieutenant Colonel Charles Howard Berry led the 1921 British Mount Everest Reconnaissance Expedition, which he chronicled in Mount Everest the Reconnaissance 1921. In the book, Howard Berry includes an account of crossing the Lag Pala at 21,000 feet, 6,400 meters, where he found footprints that he believed were probably caused by a large, loping grey wolf, which in the soft snow formed double tracks rather like those of a barefooted man. He adds that his Sherpa guides at once volunteered that the tracks must be that of the wild man of the snows, to which they gave the name Meto Kangmi. Meto translates as man bear, and Kangmi translates as snowman. Confusion exists between Howard Berry's recitation of the term Meto Kangmi and the term used in Bill Tillman's book Mount Everest 1938, where Tillman had used the words Mech, M-E-T-C-H, which does not exist in the Tibetan language, and Kangmi, that's K-A-N-G-M-I, when relating to the coining of the term Abominable Snowman. Further evidence of Mech being a misnomer is provided by Tibetan language authority Professor David Snellgrove from the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London, circa 1956, who dismissed the word Mech as impossible because the consonants TCH cannot be conjoined in the Tibetan language. Documentation suggests that the term Mech Kang Need is derived from one source from the year 1921. It has been suggested that Mech is simply a misspelling of Metor. M-E-T-O-H. The use of Abominable Snowman began when Henry Newman, longtime contributor to the Statesman in Calcutta, writing under the pen name Kim, interviewed the porters of the Everest Reconnaissance Expedition on their return to Darjeeling. Newman mistranslated the word Meto, M-E-T-O-H, of course, as filthy, substituting the term abominable perhaps out of artistic license. As author Bill Tillman recounts, Newman wrote long after in a letter to the Times, the whole story seems such a joyous creation, I sent it to one or two newspapers. According to H. Seeger, the Yeti was part of the 
pre-Buddhist beliefs of several Himalayan people, he was told that the Lepcha people worshipped a glacier being as a god of the hunt. He also reported that followers of the Bon religion once believed the blood of the Mi god or wild man had use in certain spiritual ceremonies. The being was depicted as an ape-like creature who carries a large stone as a weapon and makes a whistling swoosh sound. Yet he was adopted into Tibetan Buddhism, where it is considered a non-human animal, Tiragioni, that is nonetheless human enough to sometimes be able to follow Dharma. Several stories feature yetis becoming helpers and disciples to religious figures. In Tibet, images of yetis are paraded and occasionally worshipped as guardians against evil spirits. However, because yetis sometimes act as enforcers of Dharma, hearing or seeing one, hearing or seeing one is often considered a bad omen for which the witness must accumulate merit. Interesting. I'm reminded now of Enkidu from the story of the Epic of Gilgamesh. G Enkidu was a he was a wild man, and Gilgamesh defeated in combat. Then he became Gilgamesh's loyal friend until Enkidu passed, and Gilgamesh never truly got over the passing of his great companion. Anyway, we don't want to get over copyright requirements, whatever they might be. Sometimes it's vague. So in any case, thanks again, my good and dear friends. We'll talk about more with the Yeti next time.